For this visit blog entry, we're going to briefly review the April 26, 2015 event that affected Texas. You can see a number of tornado reports across Texas, and we're going to focus in on the area, that area where there's a line of tornado reports. So we go to the visible imagery, and what we focus in on first here is the time. It's 16.15, and we see an area of convection approximately across this area. There's a dry line to the west and if we go a little bit later you can see convection developing along the dry line right here. We move a little bit later in the loop see a fairly large area of convection developing along the dry line to the west. We see quite a bit of convection east of that and that's something we have to keep an eye on in terms of potential for outflow boundaries. As those move off to the northeast, they may be, leave behind outflow boundaries. So let's go ahead and advance along. And we see this southernmost storm beginning to take on characteristics of a severe storm in that uh, it gets this overshooting top. And then the edge of the anvil cirrus is quite crisp. And we also have a very um, tight gradient along the back shared anvil on the back side of the storm uh, right here. So this is taking on signs of a severe storm. Flanking line is approximately right in here. And you can begin to see inflow feeder clouds on the southern and southeast flank of the storm that are developing right here. Further to the north, we have uh, more storms, and these are more in competition with each other. They're fairly close to each other, so you have outflow boundaries from other nearby storms that are uh, disrupting these at times, and there's more competition for the unstable air mass. So this storm down here, in contrast, is taking in all this unstable air mass, this high cape air, moving right towards the storm. And then as we go a little bit later, in the loop here, we continue to see these inflow feeder clouds. Here's the flanking line right here. We have a very well-defined uh, anvil cirrus in that region. And as we go along to approximately this time, you can begin to see signs of a boundary that extends off to the east. So if we go back in time here, that convection that we saw earlier uh, most likely left a outflow boundary for this storm to interact on and as it did so it was uh, severe for uh, quite a period of time and then one of the questions you often have is uh, when will the storm begin to dissipate and if we go from this time right here which is 2045 UTC to 2115 you can see the anvil cirrus is definitely uh, taking on a smaller look to it. You can still see some inflow feeder clouds right here, but not as robust as uh, earlier. And then you go a little bit later in time and the inflow feeder clouds take on uh, less of a robust look th to them here. Not as much of an overshooting top. And then by the time you get to this time right here, the storm is uh, much smaller. The edge of the anvil cirrus no longer as crisp as it was earlier. And we have indications of an outflow boundary right here. So this storm has now uh, mostly outflow dominant storm. You can see indications of that outflow boundary. You no longer see the inflow feeder clouds like we did earlier. And what happened is the storm moved off the boundary towards that stable air mass, towards the northeast. So that storm uh, became less of a severe threat as it evolved from a surface-based storm to an elevated storm. And you can see by the end of the loop, it, it has now a much different appearance to it uh, than it did earlier, basically a weakening of the system. So in review, we looked at the uh, visible imagery, assessed the various air masses and boundaries, and we saw an evolution for that particular storm from a, a quite an intense severe storm uh, with a number of large hail and tornado reports, uh, and then it transitioned to a more elevated storm and less of a severe threat by the end of this loop.